So what does it actually take to write your own ABBA book and get it out there for other people to, to purchase and put it on the market? It is something that I think a lot of herbalists dream about doing, especially those of you who want to follow that teacher track. Um, and today I'm so excited to be bringing on Herbal Circle member Carol Little, who has just launched her, um, I'm not sure, I think it's her third or her fourth ebook, uh, which is 20 Medicinal Herbs for Your Culinary Garden. And I'm really excited to dive into the um, process that she's done to write the book and get it out there, the struggles that she's gone through and how she did it so that you can learn from her journey and find out what she's doing as well. So let's get right into it and um, hear from Carol. As you know, I love to write. And I have a whole philosophy about how um, we can help each other just basically immerse ourselves in herbs on every level and there's many ways to do that and certainly writing and educating is my favorite thing i've done the making of the products and a whole gamut of things to do with herbal medicine and i do have a herbal practice but it's the writing that really lights me up and the thought of actually inspiring others makes me really excited and and i'm happy to say that from the reviews so far uh, people are saying everything from, oh, it just made me want to run right out to my garden and snip some herbs and start cooking to, uh, you know, I never knew there were so many kinds of basil. And, you know, it's fun because that is the point, right? As herbalists, we, I think, all share a passion for the plant world, for the green allies that surround us and embrace us. And I guess the challenge is to sort out how to reach the folks that haven't yet been turned on by the plants and how we can help them not only find their way down our garden path with us, but also um, sort of heal the world as corny as that might sound, just you know, one, one person at a time that gets in, enthralled with the plant world, I think is another person that's uh, caring about our planet and uh, feeling better. So yeah, very excited. I love that because like a book is meant for so many people, but you've got that like specific person in mind. And it's like you're when the, the, at least the energy that I was getting from you when you were saying that was just like you're you're writing for that specific person that that um, who's going to take that and just, um, you know, use it. And it's that that magic you're spreading your your you're giving your knowledge and really um, helping helping people to, to, to understand how they can actually use herbs on a practical level, which is um, a pretty cool thing to be doing, I think. You know me and you know that I have trouble narrowing anything down. I'm, I, I see possibilities everywhere. And so I sort of wrote the book for the person that uh, maybe is just starting out in herbalism or for the person who likes to cook, but maybe is really only using parsley as a garnish and uh, maybe would like to learn a little more, or maybe for the person who actually does a lot of gardening and cooking with herbs, but hasn't really realized the depth of the healing power of the plants. And then uh, for the person who's just interested mildly, who maybe they just wanna feel better and they've heard somewhere that herbs can be helpful. Um, so I wrote the book with that in mind that, <clears throat> so, I took the 20 herbs that I finally narrowed it all down to, because of course we know there are many more than that. I wanted to pick herbs that were um, known for the most part. So common herbs and share the different aspects. So for the person who already is a gardener, they might be excited to learn, you know, basically all these herbs are anti-inflammatory, but that basil in particular, that might be an anti-inflammatory or that oregano, you know, oh, you know, everyone knows about oil of oregano, but what about this aspect of it? So there's the, for each herb, I talk about um, a little bit about the growing and then a little bit about um, what uh, attributes that herb has. And then I do a little, blurb about home uses 
So it could be a foot bath for sage, for example, or different things that one can do at home that aren't really considered medicine per se, although they all are in their own way, right? And then the recipes. So of course I've been involved for many years, 20 plus years in herbal practice and longer than that as an enchanted green fairy loving the herbs. And so I've amassed quite a number of favorite recipes. And so that was actually as well, one of the ways I picked the 20 herbs because I thought, oh, you know, I've got, I'll get a chance to share lemon balm potatoes or, uh, you know, some of my cordial recipes for anise hyssop or just things that are fun. I mean, Rosemary Gladstone was my original teacher and anybody that knows Rosie knows that her whole thing is let's make it moist and juicy. Let's be, you know, let's have fun. It's, it doesn't have to be, you know, all book learning stuff. It can be that you're just enthralled with what the plants can give us. So in each way, for each herb, I've tried to, you know, so the book itself has remedies uh, as well as recipes. And I just differentiate by saying, I think of a remedy. So in the book, I teach how to make a tincture, um, a infused oil, a salve, a tea, you know, different, different aspects, plus liqueurs, cordials, and those I consider more remedies, and then the recipes I consider to be more the culinary recipes, but each herb has all of it, bits of it all in there. So I don't know if that was a long rambling answer <laughs> to your question, but I'm I sort of wrote it with the idea that different people would see different parts of it. Someone might go into it and embrace the entire everything about it, Somebody else might know all about making, you know, cucumber salad with dill, but they might not realize that when they're eating that cucumber salad with yogurt and dill that they're actually giving themselves a whole list of other wonderful benefits. So, yeah, well, I think that the strength of what you do as an herbalist is really the depth of your knowledge and being able to kind of share that knowledge with people, which is why it's cool that you put this into the, the book like this, because you've... Um, you know, taking your knowledge and your experience, your recipes, the, the uses and, and your kind of what you do with the herbs and shared it in a way that, um, yeah, other people can learn from and um, experience in a fun way. Like you say, like that juicy way that um, getting it, making it more, um, yeah, livable, I guess. And that's what we want is, is to be able to really live the herbs and get into it. And that's um, lovely that that's coming through in the way that you, the way that you write. I know that a lot of people would love to write a book about herbs, but one of the things that is very tricky and holds them back is actually um, kind of pulling all the pieces and making it happen as far as like being a bit of overwhelmed or like just how to actually write a book. And so I would love to know, like, what was your personal take, your process that worked for you to, to write the book? I knew that I wanted to like, food as medicine is a really important topic for uh, me and also the th I had this idea for the book before the process really I don't know if you mean physically what I did I wrote it all in word and and then started trying to teach myself that's my weakness is the technology as you well know but as someone who did not grow up with a computer I'm not um, I certainly run my own website, but as far as creating the book in designer, which is what I used, um, of course, after I was three quarters of the way through that, I discovered I could have done it on Canva, possibly with less um, learning curve. However, um, it, it was a real process. And funny enough, I could have written it and had it ready, if all I had to do was send in a word uh, processing document, it would have been done in a month. But as it was with all of the other um, parts to it, moving parts, um, it was quite a bit longer than that. So, um, but you know what? You have to pick your, pick who you wanna reach, I think, and then pick what you feel might be something you could share, a specialty that you have or a love that you have, it, the topic is so wide and deep and then figure out a way to share it that will answer um, a question for our potential buyer or client or 
family member, whatever, whoever we're writing for. So I tried to do that and hope that I have. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think you most certainly have. And that, that is such an important point that you make that like, you're not just writing a book to write a book, you're writing a book for like an actual purpose to help a specific person and to fill a gap that isn't there already. Another question um, to follow up on that. So like, um, you have a like a huge amount of content on your blog, Studio Botanica, and you've been writing blog posts for years. And um, like, how did you decide which information to include and what not to include, or which herbs to include and which herbs not to inc include? How did you make those decisions as far as the content? To I decided I was going to do 20. And of course, garlic has to be part of that. And you then, oh no, I can't leave out this one or that one. And it, I did have to chop some, but the ones that I guess made the 20 in this particular book um, are the ones that I felt that, um, again, are fairly common and yet have all these surprises for people to offer. Uh, things that you, and I wanted it to be that the 20 herbs really, without even saying this to anybody before today, it's kind of like your apothecary in a way. Um, so I wanted it to be well-rounded. So there are nervines in there, nervous system supporters. There are um, herbs for, that would help in case of anxiety or just the different parts of what appears to be going on in the world right now and is needed. So certainly um, my practice in the last year has been a lot of um, nervous system, anti-anxiety, sleep, um, immune system boosting, et cetera. So all of these herbs in different ways offer aspects of those um, attributes and healing components to them. So I guess that's how I ended up. I just yeah, well, sort of it did probably it. comes <laughs> naturally to you as an educator, but um, it doesn't come naturally to everyone. And I know that like a lot of people who are trying to write books are just kind of like they get stuck on yeah how to do it or even just how to like start or do the outline. Like it, it's a pretty big undertaking to actually write a book, and it's already a huge achievement that you've actually got your book and it's out there for sale. And so I know you mentioned that the the tech is a um, kind of an ongoing struggle for you but like is that the toughest part of the whole book or was it a different part of the the process of writing like what was the most difficult thing when it comes to writing your book and how did you overcome that well it is indeed for me the tech I actually wrote my book three times I started it off in the program that I thought I was going to write it in then I was told no 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 you can't do that so I was told to rewrite it in word so I got three quarters of the way, at least maybe more through the book in Word. And I was told, no, 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 you're not doing that right either. So you need to do it this way. So it's like, oh my God, someone just take over and do that part for me. That's what I want for the next book. <laughs> Although I learned so much that now I think I'm actually quite capable of doing another one without having to write it three times. Uh, yeah, for me, it's the tech part. I didn't find any of the other stuff hard. I just thought of the number of herbs, thought what I wanted to share about each herb. You know, most of it I just wrote freehand. Um, although I did refer to some of my class notes from years ago for some of the, you know, to make it uh, complete in terms of the um, healing attributes of the plants, the highlights as I called them. Yeah. Because we know that like something like lavender could have an entire book if not 50 pages just on a Materia Medica. So I just had to pick some of my favorite attributes for each one so that people wouldn't be overwhelmed. I think that's really important is people don't want to feel stupid. And there's enough people out in the world making herbs and herbalism be complicated. And I think it's really important. And I've never been afraid to just be myself and straightforward and honest. Uh, when I had my store, I mean, the original Studio Botanica was a brick and mortar uh, shop. And it was the same then. I think that people just uh, want to learn 
and you, you want to explain things to them in a good way and not make it all mysterious. I don't mean give away every formula that you've ever created, but I think that when you share your your ideas and your teas and your whether whatever tinctures that you're making with your um, audience that they just um, love it all the more. So I think that to make things really easy and straightforward is been always my way um, in teaching. Um, because really, I just want people to say, I get that, and then take off with it and learn. And I'm sure I've influenced many people over my career who have become salve makers or when I used to teach classes back when I had my store, I had many people jetting off and becoming um, little entrepreneurs on their own. And it, it's great. It's very satisfying to see. I think that's actually also another one, something that you're really good at is the relationships and building and like kind of growing alongside people. And that's something else, like you mentioned, that you've kind of been working with Rosemary Gladstar. And I know that Rosemary Gladstar has also kind of um, endorsed your book or um, given a little testimony, which is kind of um, uh, a really great thing for your credibility and getting it out there. I, I'm pretty like I would be pretty excited about that. Um, how, how did that go? How did you get that as far as um, like marketing the book? It's a, it's a good, it's a good point, I would say. <laughs> well, I always send her everything I write. Uh, we're old friends. And of course, she was my original teacher and mentor. We've traveled the world together, had many a good time, and we keep in touch like personally. So for me to just send her a copy of my book and say, what do you think? She knows um, she's always so extremely supportive anyway but she loves me a lot and wants me to do well and so she always writes for any of my books she's always done a little forward or a little uh something she's an amazing woman yeah she's very special but I didn't have to ask and I never do and that's um I really honor her and I support her and I I always share her um and I think it's very important to recognize your teachers so that when you like in this book, for example, my original uh, teacher was uh, actually Heather Bacasius here in Ontario, but then um, moving on to uh, Rosemary, Heather actually told me to go and learn. So I apprenticed with Rosemary back in the 90s. And then I have another amazing teacher, Michael Vertoli from the Living Earth School here in uh, Canada. And he um, has an online school, the Living Earth School. And all of these teachers, and I realize there's been many, many more since then, they all offer a part of themselves. And, a, and I think it's really important that what we learn from them, we may move forward and make it our own, but at the same time, I always, always acknowledge, and I know she really appreciates that because I have been a promoter of her, her course for many, many years um, for that reason. Because you know what? We have to help each other. That's what it's all about. Yeah. It is. I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And that's a beautiful, like, that's what it's all about. And like, I really like what you said about the acknowledging your teachers, because that is how it is that as far as we kind of have a, a mosaic of learning from all those different pieces and put together our own kind of take on it but it's not necessarily just from one or the other it's just like pulling together all of those pieces those influences but then acknowledging yeah. where kind of you came from as an herbalist is really important and and also beautiful because you're sharing that journey with others and just like looking back at where it came from and that like that carrying on of knowledge is is such a, a wonderful thing that we can do everyone is coming from a different place so one herbalist might really have a an affinity as a mother to share with other moms something in particular. Someone else might have, maybe they're a, a chef and they're a herbalist as well. And so they wanna go down that road or, so it just depends who people want to reach, I think. And then what they themselves are impassioned about if there is a particular topic. I don't see it, I mean, I love all parts of herbalism, but there are certain things that I would gravitate towards teaching and other things I wouldn't just because I have my own personal interests. And I know that there are times that, that maybe you see an opportunity to write something and it maybe isn't your favorite topic within the subject, but um, my experience is I just write the things that I think people can most benefit from learning at a particular time in life as we move through. And I, and I, 
I pick those topics based on the people that I want to reach and the fact that I, I am excited about that topic or I see it's important. Like one of my other books is um, about cold and flu season. Well, I live in Canada and we have a long winter. And so at the time when I wrote it, it was like, oh my God, everybody's sick. People are running around getting the flu vaccine, which I um, shouldn't comment about maybe, but I have some ideas about whether or not um, they can help themselves easily through a whole whack of things that I taught in that book. Then I did another one on herbal teas for winter health, again, because I'm up here with a long winter. But the fact is that anyone can use those teas any time of year in any country. It's not that it's restricted to the frozen north. But um, that was, I just saw a need for teaching about that kind of niche within herbal medicine, how to make a beautiful tea. It's kind of like the basic thing and, and maybe how to, uh, here are some of my favorites and why I use them and when I use them. So it's it's just, you know, the topics are endless. I have 40,000 books up here. I'm just waiting to, <laughs> I'm kidding. Maybe not that many. There's a lot though, things I still want to share. <laughs> that shows that there is the passion. You've got like a never ending bank of ideas because it's like, you probably, it shows that you're doing what you're meant to be doing is like writing books and, and sharing your knowledge, which is um, pretty exciting. As we move through in our journey as herbalists, uh, we're always evolving. And I don't think that we should wait until we think we know enough because goodness knows I am still learning. I am a forever student. Um, when I started my blog, I mean, it was like, what am I thinking? Like, how could I be writing this for someone to read? I mean, it was, it's only 11, 12 years ago, but it's like, I think we just need to not worry about that. I mean, don't, don't be something you're not be authentic and it's okay to not have a PhD and blah, 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 just be who you are and share and find, I guess, folks that uh, want to hear it. Let's just hear a little bit about, give us a quick blurb about your book and how um, people can, can find it. So one thing before I'm happy to do that one thing before is that there I have found with your help, the Herbal Circle has been amazingly supportive. And you, of course, as our head cheerleader um, have been really, really helpful on so many levels. And um, one of the things you pushed me to do was find some help um, via Upwork or whichever out in the world. And I have. And so I just wanna say thank you for that and that that if anyone is looking for that sort of help that I would love uh, to share that information because it took me a while to get that whole thing figured out. And I would love to share and support the people who are helping me now move along with their own businesses because it's all about sharing. And as we move along in our lives as people and, and in our herbal professions or as herbal enthusiasts, however we wanna see ourselves, I think we develop a philosophy and it may not even be that we've called it that until you start to realize that, yes, I actually have a philosophy. And in my case, you will always see my work will always be the same. It will be because what my philosophy ends up being is how to encourage, embrace and lift up people so that they um, experience uh, better health on whether it's mental, physical, spiritual levels and how herbs as a healer can help them do that. And so it's a wide topic, obviously, but that's my passion, whether it's teaching them with food or teas or uh, teas as food or medicine, whatever it is, it's about helping people to lift themselves up this life for sure. That's it. So each of us needs to find our own little tagline in our head, I think. And that's like a guiding light that helps us when we're wanting to write an article or a blog post or a book. It's the same idea all throughout. That's a wonderful piece of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, I, and like I, yeah. Thank you so much for like for sharing that, but like for sharing everything that you've shared today. I think it's um yeah. 
I love hearing about people's journeys and what they're working on, but I, I just think it's really, it truly really is wonderful that you've um, been able to put it all together and put together your offer and you're um, getting it out there into the world, which is, um, yeah, it's important work to be doing and just sharing your love of herbs, which is kind of, um, yeah, what your expertise is as an herbalist. You're that educator, that teacher role. Right now, it is actually the, um, like with the opening special. So I'm yeah. calling it my celebration sale and it's a little Ooh. secret. It's like, I'm celebrating that it's done. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I loved writing it, I did it three times. And by the time it was done, I was ready. Here, go out into the world, make people happy. <laughs> Absolutely. I, <laughs> but celebrate that you wrote it three times, but we get it for the price of one. <laughs> but yeah, so now is the best time to get in because it's before the end of June. And then... Um, yeah, you get to, to be like, yeah, go through the book and learn about those 20 medicinal herbs and the culinary um, garden. And then like, and I think it is something that any levels of herbalists can actually benefit from as well, because we've had a few other Herbal Circle members um, uh, purchase the book and they're all getting value out of it as well. And a lot of them are oh, quite yeah. experienced herbalists. So it's not necessarily just for your beginner herbalist either. There's um, obviously inf information there for, for people who have kind of done some study in herbs before oh, as well. Definitely. And uh, there's 50 plus recipes. So even just for the fun, the playtime with the, with the herbs in, in our cuisine, it, it, I think people are really enjoying it too. Oh, yes, absolutely. Recipes are so much fun and just getting those ideas from different people. And so like, yeah, just getting that, um, yeah, more things to experiment with and play with the herbs. And that's, um, yeah, and it's not just the knowledge. It's also the actual putting it into practice, the juice, exactly. as you said. Or Practical magic, said. right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty exciting. So that is um, right now we've got until the end of June is the um, special uh, celebration sale. And um, yeah, so that's to say 50% for the like opening special. You can't get much better than that. So um, yeah, get your copy. And um, I, yeah, but I just really do want to say, Carol, I'm really proud of the work that you've put in. Like, as I said, we've kind of watched your journey over the last five months as you've been kind of like putting together your ideas, working out who exactly your target audience is, working out the tech and like those different decisions and even building your team to help you put it all together. Like there's been all these little pieces that you put together along the way and it's been wonderful to watch like it all unfold and yeah finally getting it out there into the world. So let's like yeah do this celebration sale, let's put the ebook out there and I hope that yeah everyone really does enjoy it.